Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Minda and I'm going to continue with the series on the brainstem. So we had already discussed about the medulla oblongata and now I'm going to discuss on um, the pons. So from this picture you can appreciate the pons in um, is that maroon or pink, that's the pons. Okay, and the structures, the cranial nerves around the pons, we have the trigeminal nerve there. And appreciate the abducens, facial and vestibular cochlear nerves at the um, medallopontine junction. So, ventral to the pons, at the ventral aspect, I mean, we have an anterior median groove that usually lodges the basilar artery. So, we call it the basilar groove, where my arrow is pointing. Then, laterally, um, the pons is joined to the cerebellum by the middle cerebellar pedicle. And in the central portion of this pedicle is the trigeminal nerve. So this is the middle cerebellar pedicle, all right? It joins the pons laterally to the cerebellum and we have the trigeminal nerve located there. So the cerebellopontine angle is the angle between the cerebellum and the pons. And the boundaries are rostrally, we have the pons, caudally, we have the medulla, and the cerebellum is located laterally. So this is the normal side. This has a tumor. This is a tumor here. So let's discuss the CP angle on the normal side. So rostrally, we have the pons. That's the pons. Caudally, we have the medulla. That's the medulla. And laterally, we have the cerebellum. So this region here is the cerebellopontine angle. And it contains cranial nerve 7 and 8, facial nerve and vestibular cochlear nerve. So when you have a tumor in the CP angle, you can see the facial and vestibular cochlear nerves are being affected, okay? So you have defects of the facial nerve and defects of the vestibular cochlear nerves. So by now, you need to go and read about the 12 cranial nerves and know their function so that subsequently, as we discuss structures affecting the cranial nerves, you need to have a clue on what may happen to which, each nerve. But for now, facial nerve, mainly innervates the muscles of facial expression while vestibular cochlear nerve helps with hearing and balance and then cp angle tumors are also characterized by motor deficits if they involve of course um, the pyramids so which nuclei are located at the pons we have cranial nerve nuclei like motor parts of trigeminal we have the abducens nuclei facial um, nuclei with vestibular cochlear nerve nuclei and the chief sensory nuclei of trigeminal nerve. Then we also have other nuclei like pontine nuclei that form part of the corticoponto cerebellar pathway. Then we have the dorsal nucleus of trapezoid body which relay, uh, is a relay station for the cochlear projection. Then we also have the pontine reticular formation nuclei that usually control the vital functions. Vital functions include the cardiorespiratory functions and vessel motor functions. So which tracts are located in the pons? We have the corticospinal, um, which are continuing into the pyramid of the medulla, corticonuclei from the cerebral cortex to the um, nuclei of the cranial nerves, corticopontine from the cortex to the pons, the trapezoid bodies that usually form lateral lemniscus, and we also have ascending tracts like spinal thalamic from the spinal cord to the thalamus, and medial lemniscus, which are from the new uh, fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus to the thalamus. Okay, we also have interconnecting fibers like medial longitudinal fasciculus that pass through the pons. So the pons mainly get its blood supply through the basilar artery. Remember, basilar artery is formed by the union of the right and left vertebral artery. So this picture you need to pause here and be able to learn the nuclei and the tracts that are located at the pons. All right, so this is the pons. Remember, we said the fourth ventricle is posterior to the pons and the medulla. So we are still able to appreciate the fourth ventricle here. And anteriorly, we talked to the basilar groove. This is the basilar groove, that's the location. So this is the basal pons that contains, these are corticospinal tracts, corticospinal, corticopontine, and corticobulbar tracts are located here. You have the raphe nuclear that are serotonergic. You have the trigeminal thalamic nuclear here that form the trigeminal lemniscus, spinal thalamic tract within the spinal lemniscus. All right, mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal, 
main nucleus of sensory nucleus of trigeminal. You have the locus cellularis, which are non-adrenergic nuclei of the reticular formation, and the motor nuclei of trigeminal here. So you have three nuclei of trigeminal, mesencephalic, main sensory nuclei, and motor nucleus. Remember the spinal nucleus of trigeminal is located in the medulla. Again, you pause and appreciate the parts of the pons. So this is the pons. This is the fourth ventricle. This is the floor of the fourth ventricle. So we have the facial colliculus, okay? And what forms the facial colliculus? This is the abducens nerve nucleus with the facial nerve going around it. You can be asked to list two components of the facial colliculus. Abducens nucleus with facial nerve going around it. So then we, you can appreciate the inferior cerebellar peduncle here. All right. The spinal nucleus and tract of trigeminal. This is the basal pons that contains corticospinal, corticobulba, and corticopontine um, tract. This is the medial lemniscus, which we say contains uh, tracts that are coming from fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus, which are carrying information about uh, proprioception, vibrate, vibration, and two point discrimination. This is the middle cerebellar peduncle. This is the inferior cerebellar peduncle. And you can appreciate the nuclei of the, the vestibular nuclei. You have dorsal vestibular nuclei, ventral vestibular nuclei, all right? So you need to appreciate all these are vestibular nuclei. Again, the facial colliculi with abducens nuclei and facial nerve going round it. This is the basal pons that contains corticobulba, corticospinal, and corticopontine fibers. You can be asked to list three components of the basal pons. That's it. And then these are the vestibular nuclei and the cochlear nuclei. All right. And from the nuclei, you can appreciate vestibular cochlear nerve coming out. Then um, another thing, this is a spinal thalamic tract that carry pain and temperature sensation. This is the medial lemniscus from fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus in the spinal cord to nucleus fasciculus and gracilis and cuneatus in the medulla. Then they pass through here the medial lemniscus, okay, to go up to the thalamus. So medial lemniscus carry proprioception, vibration, and two-point discriminatory information. Then that's a reticular formation nuclei like locus, ceruleus, and raphi nuclei. So we discussed the midbrain. So the midbrain is the superior most part of the brainstem. From the midbrain, you get to the pons, then to the medulla. So the midbrain has what we call the cru cerebri, and um, this forms the rostral. Uh, uh, it's basically from the rostral pons towards the optic tract. So the cru cerebri contains corticospinal, corticobulba, and corticopontine fibers. Remember, these are going to pass through the basal pons. Then we also have a substantia nigra in the midbrain, and substantia nigra uh, is deep to the cruis cerebri, and together with it, they form basis pedacle. Okay, they form basis pedacle. So this is the uh, cross section of the midbrain. So this is the cruis cerebri that has cortical pontine fibers on the medial and lateral aspect. These are cortical pontine fibers, and the middle part has cortical bulba and cortical spinal tracts. Posterior to it, we have substantia nigra. Okay, so this is the substantia nigra, which usually contains pigmented neurons, and it's deep to the cruis cerebri and forms together with the cruis cerebri forms basis pedacle. So the midbrain has tectum and tegmentum. The tegmentum is formed by basis pedacle and the midbrain uh, tegmentum. So together they're called the cerebral pedacles. So this is the the midbrain. Is divided into tectum, which is the posterior part. These are the tectum, and the rest of the midbrain is a tegmentum. So, what is the boundary? The boundary is formed by the cerebral aqueduct. Okay, remember, cerebral aqueduct carries CSF from third ventricle to fourth ventricle. So, if you draw a line at where the cerebral aqueduct passes, dorsal to it is a tectum, which contains superior colliculi, and inferior to it, you have the inferior colliculi. Also called all of them, the four of them are called corpora quadrigemina. Anterior to the cerebral aqueduct, we have the, the tegmentum. And the tegmentum has the basis peduncle, which is cruis cerebri and substantia nigra, together with the other parts of the midbrain tegmentum. Then, the tectum, I've already said, at the dorsal part of the midbrain, posterior to the cerebral aqueduct, you have four of them. 
two superior folliculi for visual reflexes and two inferior folliculi for auditory reflexes. And cranial to the superior folliculi, between them you have the pineal body. Okay, so which nuclei are located in the midbrain? We have oculomotor nuclei and accessory oculomotor nuclei, which is also called the Edinger Westphal nuclei, that usually has a parasympathetic function. Edinger Westphal nuclei has a parasympathetic function. Then we also have trochlear nuclei for the fourth cranial nerve at the level of inferior colliculi. Remember, oculomotor nuclei and accessory oculomotor nuclei are at the level of superior colliculi. Trochlear nuclei is at the level of inferior colliculi. Then we also have the mesencephalic tract and nucleus of trigeminal nerve. So again, you get to appreciate, um, we have a red nucleus here, okay? Red nucleus is at the level of superior colliculi, as well as oculomotor nuclei and accessory, accessory oculomotor nuclei located at that region, all right? So red nucleus controls movement and posture, Substantia nigra is also for control of movement, okay? Then superior colliculi is for visual reflexes, while um, inferior colliculi are for auditory reflexes. We also have pretectal nuclei for pupillary reflexes and reticular formation, of course, for motor control and cortical activation because that's where the vital centers are regulated. And this uh, shows you where each of these nuclei are connected to. So pause at this slide and be able to appreciate the connections of the different nuclei. The midbrain has a cruise cerebri that has corticospinal, cortical nuclear fibers in the middle and cortical pontine within the lateral aspect. Then the medial lemniscus carries um, proprioception, vibration and discriminatory touch from nucleus gracilis and cuneatus, which are the dorsal columns of the spinal cord. Spinal lemniscus carries spinothalamic and spinal tectal fibers. Remember, spinothalamic uh, we'll discuss later. Then lateral lemniscus carries auditory information from the cochlear nucleus. So those are the pathways within the midbrain. You can appreciate the tectum, and above the superior colliculi, you have the pineal body. These are the superior colliculi, these are inferior colliculi. So these are the tectum, which are the posterior part of the midbrain. They're also called the corpora cogitemini. Again, these are the tectum, you can appreciate the inferior colliculi, okay? And these are the superior colliculi. So if you cut through at the level of the inferior colliculus, so we're going to make a cross-section at the level of the inferior colliculus, what do you see? So this is what you appreciate. There'll be the cerebral peduncle with cortical pontine, cortical pontine, and the middle has cortical spinal and cortical bulbar. This is substantia nigra, substantia nigra, okay? And then this is the tegmentum. This is the cerebral aqueduct inferior aqueductal grid. So at the level of inferior colliculi, you will appreciate, I'm so sorry for that, you will appreciate trochlear nerve nucleus and mesencephalic nucleus. So this is trochlear nerve, cranial nerve 4, and mesencephalic or cranial nerve 5. At the level of superior colliculi, you need to, uh, up, you will see superior colliculi, you'll see cerebral aqueduct, periaqueductal gray matter, you'll see cerebral peduncle and substantia nigra. So all these are common even for the inferior colliculi level. But at the level of superior colliculi, we see oculomotor nucleus, edinger westphal nucleus, which is parasympathetic nucleus of the third cranial nerve, and also the red nucleus. So these three are specific for superior colliculus level. Red nucleus, oculomotor, edinger westphal. While inferior colliculi level, you get to appreciate mesencephalic of trigeminal and the trochlear nucleus. Blood supply to the midbrain is mostly by the basilar artery, so also the posterior communicating and anterior choroidal arteries. And we have what we call the Weber's syndrome, and this is usually due to occlusion of mesencephalic branch of the uh, posterior cerebral artery, and usually affects corticospinal tracts, oculomotor nerve, and editor westphal nucleus. So you can be asked, what is Weber's syndrome? Okay, and name the anatomical structures that are affected in Weber's syndrome and state their clinical uh, symptoms. So corticospinal tract lesion will lead to contralateral hemiparesis. Oculomotor nerve uh, lesion will lead to ipsilateral paralysis of ocular muscles, except lateral rectus muscle that's innervated by abducens nerve and superior oblique that is usually innervated by trochlear nerve. You'll get lateral strabismus, 
the eyeball will be pushed to the lateral aspect because lateral mm -hmm. rectus and superior oblique are still intact. They are not innervated by kilomotor nerve. Then you get pupillary dilatation if Edinger-Westphal nuclei has been affected. Edinger-West 